Yes, okay. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm always so happy to be here. When I get in my car on Sunday, the Sunday morning that I'm coming here, I have a really zen experience. <laughs> I do, because I'm coming to a place that I feel like I'm coming home. And just like when um, Betty stood up and said, can you feel the love in here? I can feel the love the minute I walk in. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I love being here. So today what we're going to talk about, I love that Spirit shoots these titles through me. And I don't really, it's like I take my hands off and I'm not really the one who's, who it's about. However, today we're going to talk about the ultimate reboot. Let's explore our factory settings. Okay, so <laughs> it's a 21st century talk, obviously. And that's where, we're, that's where we are. You know, we're bringing all the best we can. You know, often a Reverend Joan, who we all love, says, for times such as these, each one of us has come. So here we are, 21st century, we bring, we bring our gifts. So I um, decided to look up and see, like I have had one of my Apple devices not work. Like my iPad mini actually didn't work. And so I called Apple and they said, well you have to take it back to the factory settings. And I panicked. I went, what? All these things, all this stuff? What, what am I gonna do? And they said, well, you can take it back to the factory settings or you can just use it did not work. You could just have it and it did not work. It wasn't doing some sort of thing. And so they said, that's your choice. So, <laughs> so I did actually do that. I took it back to the factory settings and I'm standing here today. I survived it. However, um, I thought I would first talk about uh, the definition. Like, what do we mean when we're restoring something to the factory settings? Because we can restore our phone, our computer. And these days, you can probably restore an automobile. I was thinking, I have a... Um, old automobile. I have a eight-year-old car, nine-year-old car, but new cars that I get in with my friends, there's all, there's computer stuff, you know, there's a lot more computer stuff than the engine stuff. So you can probably reset an automobile too, back to the factory settings. I see Randy shaking his head, yes you can. So you can. <laughs> However, what I decided to look up what it really means and so I, what, it, what I found online was restoring means getting the machine to work as when new. Also, when you restore it back to the factory settings, it looks like the memory is wiped out. But the information lives on on the hard drive, and it stays until it is overridden or completely destroyed. The other thing about the factory uh, reset is that it's a built-in device, and deleting the data, deleting means the data can no longer be accessed by your present system. So, when we think about our original factory settings, when I think about my original factory settings, because when we all got here, um, recently I was blessed to be in the presence of a baby. And the baby was, what, a week, a week and a half old, I think? And the parents, of course, were so excited and so overwhelmed. And I said, I whispered to the baby, thanks for coming, and thanks for bringing the things that the rest of us have forgotten. Because all those things that, and the babies didn't smile, babies don't smile, I understand that, but the baby perked up. And the parents said, oh, she, she hasn't perked up like that before. We haven't seen her perk up like that before. And I said, yeah, I get it, I understand, because I'm trying my best to speak to her in the language that she knows and that we all know, but that we have forgotten. You know, that we have put layer after layer after layer after layer after layer after layer after layer on top of the truth that we really know. So when I was thinking about what are our original factory settings, it became clear to me that they are God qualities or spirit qualities. So some of the qualities I thought of that we start out with is love, joy, peace, harmony, exhilaration, mm -hmm. calm, wisdom, grace. Can you think of any others? If you can, shout it out. Any others? Nobody can think of any others? Curiosity. Compassion, curiosity. Kindness. Kindness, yeah. So those are all some of the things that we start out with. And we start out with them, and then somewhere along the way, maybe they slip away, or they don't take precedence in our lives, or we might even forget about them. Okay, so I was thinking how, I'm not thinking, actually, I was having a conversation with Spirit about this, truly, about, okay, so the way we reestablish our factory settings is what? Okay, because we come with the factory settings, and then it happens because we humans believe in time. Chronologically, perhaps, they slip away. And that is not to say that 
The factory settings that I had when I was zero are not still in me. Here I am decades later. However, in what way is best for me to be in the beingness to reestablish the factory settings? And so it became real clear to me, Spirit always brings these things to me in the middle of the night, there's two really easy ways that we can do this. And that those two ways are perspective shift and imaginings. Okay, so our perspective, I found this great quote uh, by Aldous Huxley. There are things known and there are things unknown. And in between are the doors of perspective. Isn't that yummy? Isn't that good? It's just so, it, it is to me. It's just so luscious to me. It's like there are things known and unknown. And in between are the doors of perspective. So our perspective can change at any time. And a big part of our perspective is our intentionality. Okay, because our perspective, like, is how I, how I look at something. How I, I choose to look at something. It's like, I choose to look at Betty as wisdom and love and joy and peace. And I could also choose to look at Betty as a fun girlfriend to go hang out with. Okay, so there are all sorts of ways we can use our perspective. So the, one of the ways is by our intentionality. And I just finished teaching a class on prosperity. However, the class came with this really spectacular book, just, well, just about as good as Spiritual Liberation. Not quite, but close. It was called uh, Soul Currency by Ernest Chu. And it was a completely different way to look at our manifestation and our prosperity. However, one of the things in the book that he pointed out was intentionality. Now, I was familiar with intention. We're, we're all familiar with intention. I set an intention, I step away, I let spirit work. Okay. However, intentionality is something that I learned just has a little bit more depth, be depth because he says it's the blueprint of co-creation in universal source. <clears throat> so it's, a, it's our blueprint of co-creation in the universal source, our intentionality. And I love that too because then that means we are co-creating with the universal source and we are part of the blueprint. It's so oftentimes in life we may feel like things are done to us or things are happening around us. However, the real truth is that we are the ones who are making the blueprint. We are truly the architects of our lives. So if we have intentionality, then that's how we set up that blueprint. And also, what I love, I was listening to Dr. Beckwith, and he was pointing out that intentionality transcends our DNA. You know how you have certain DNA, you know those shows that are really popular now, I love it, um, Henry Louis Gates has a show. And it tells all about where you came from and who you are and all your ancestors. And one of my sisters had our ancestral um, workup, I guess you call it, done. And she found out a lot of things. One of the things she found out is that we were 27% Nigerian, which made me pretty happy. Nigerians are really strong Africans. They're really educated Africans. They're, they're spectacular Africans. <laughs> and they believe in who and what they are. Because my first uh, impression of them is that they are conceited Africans. <laughs> <laughs> I admit that. <laughs> and I came to know as I decided to shift my perspective, and actually as I came to be friends with some Nigerians, Nigerian people over there and here, is that they really know the truth of who and what they are. And they stand in it. Okay, and they accept it. And so when I found out that part of me was Nigerian, it helped me more and more and more to actually be the truth of who and what I am, stand in the truth of who and what I am, and know, oh yes, this is what you are. You are absolutely a divine gift of the beloved, and that each one of us, not just Nigerians, but each one of us has come to emanate the grand design of spirit's mind. Each one of us is here to, to illuminate that, to express that, to illustrate that, to radiate that, to be that. I mean, can you imagine thinking about you, each one of us here, when you look in the mirror in the morning, you are the grand design of spirit. That's phenomenal to me. That's really spectacular to me, and it's wonderful to me, and we get an opportunity to shift our perspective to know that, to be that, and to experience that. And while we're shifting our perspective, while we're living in the perspective change, we also get a chance to know about at one moment. So this word at one moment, uh, when I was a girl, I thought it was atonement, okay? Which it still could be. However, today, I've decided, we've decided, actually Ernest Holmes was the one who first broke it down. That at one moment is an experience of human unity with God exemplified 
by the Christ consciousness within. So isn't that, I mean, I love this too because what I love is that what we know, Jesus the Christ was not an exception. Jesus the Christ was an example. And that example was to let each one of us know that what was in him is in us. Every single one of us, what was in him is in us. And the thing about Jesus the Christ was that he was more willing to accept it. He was more willing to accept what he came for, and he was more willing to accept what we might call miracles, which is truly just, to me, standing in the awareness of the truth of what we are. So each one of us gets to be in a place of at one moment, if we'd like to reestablish our factory settings. So now the other way to reestablish our factory settings, I read this great book. As you can tell, I've told you guys before, I love to read it. But I read, I read a great book. I'd like to be in the book club, Jan. I read a, a great book <laughs> um, by Neville Goddard. It's called uh, The Law and the Promise. And in this book, Neville Goddard hypothesizes, and I agree with him, that the imaginings of the universe is what keeps the universe going. That our imaginings is what keeps the universe going. So another way to return ourselves to the factory settings is our imaginings. Now. I'm going to ask you to do something, and it's really easy. Just close your eyes for a minute and pretend that you are four years old and that you're laying in the grass in your backyard or at a park. You're laying in the grass, and you're allowing your mind to just go flow freely, and you're allowing yourself to revel in and be immersed in the imaginings of your mind. <coughs> so now that you have that, I invite you to come back into the room. And as you come back into the room, I invite you to not fixate on what the imagining was, however, feel the feeling, the tone. Just take a minute and, and take note of how you feel. I don't know about you, but when I do that, I have a completely different feeling. I don't feel like the adult Verona. I feel like the girl Verona, and I actually feel like infinite possibilities. I feel like spirit within because I can feel the infinite possibilities. Laying there in the grass, looking up at the sky, just letting things flow through. And it's not the things that flow through that's of the utmost importance, it's the feeling. It's that feeling <clears throat> tone. So if we allow ourselves to be in that feeling tone of imaginings, it's a spiritual sensation. And that spiritual sensation feels the energetic mold of the universal givingness, universal remembrance, and universal desires. Because what I love is that everything that we desire has already been given in spirit. Everything that I desire is a desire of the heart of spirit. And so the desiring that I have and that you have means that I am ready to make the mold, the energetic mold, for its formation. You know, as we know, form consciousness Form follows consciousness, okay? So that when I have the consciousness of a certain imaginings, then it's ready. When I get that consciousness, that means that it's ready to be birthed, it's ready to evolve, it's ready to come out and make itself known. It's ready to come from consciousness into form. So imaginings also creates and sustains all of our mental concepts that are presently tangible to our intuition. You know, intuition, I've been having lately a lot of intuitive experiences. And so I was talking to a friend of mine who, this is her, she's very intuitive. And I asked her, I said, so what do you think that means? I'm having all these intuitive experiences, God bless you here. And what she helped me to understand it means is that I am opening up to my intuitive self more and more and more and more. And I'm stepping, in, stepping into the imaginings of spirit within and as me. And you know, when you listen to your intuitive voice, I mean, we've all experienced, I'm sure, our intuition said one thing, we did another thing, and then, lo and behold, there is some 
effect, shall we say, as a result of not listening to our intuition. So our intuition is connected to the imaginings that are within us. It's really clear that those two things go together and also that our imaginal power creates our reality. What, what imaginings we have, it absolutely creates our, our, our reality. So Neville Goddard, Goddard says, nothing continues being save what imagining supports. So think about it, the vehicles we came in here today, some, it was someone's imaginings, mm -hmm. okay? The chairs were sitting on, someone's imaginings. The space, someone's imaginings. Mm -hmm. So with, when we allow ourselves to go back to our imaginings or to be in our imaginings, not even go back, just to stand strong in our imaginings, it's another way to reestablish ourselves back to the factory settings of all those God qualities that we listed before. So I, um, when I'm up here, I, or when I'm sitting there, I always think, mm -hmm, yeah, 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 sure, sure. So how's that working in your life? <laughs> so <laughs> I do, I have to be transparent. So I was thinking about this. I was thinking about all last night and all this morning, and so real, I realized how these two things are working in my life. So perspective, <coughs> shift, perspective change, and imaginings all together. So for a long time, I wanted to be a public speaker. However, I went the public speaking route that was the spiritual public speaking route, and it didn't thrill me, okay? And I say that to say I wasn't like at Kiwanis and all those sorts of things. I was on, as you guys know, the airplane, being a public speaker, because that's what I do. And, oh, maybe 15, 20 years ago it came to me, yeah, you, you have something to share. However, what you have to share is from spirit. And that's the only way you're going to be able to share it, is from and through it as spirit. So I did my work. I, I, went, I went to school and became a practitioner of the Centers for Spiritual Living. I went to school and got ministerial certification. And so I still wanted to, I mean, I had this growing desire within me to share my gifts. And so I don't know how long ago it was. I really started, without, unbeknownst to me, without using these terms, I really started having a perspective change, a perspective shift, as well as imagining different imaginings of things that were mine to be. And my imaginings actually came partly to through visioning. And the imaginings were me standing up in front of a crowd of people speaking, and it was a large crowd of people. Also, it was my imaginings was global outreach, like that I would share my gifts with the globe. So I've been doing that regularly and just knowing that and accepting that and doing all these things I'm telling you about and having a perspective shift and stepping into the intentionality and things like that. So about 10 days ago, a friend of mine, who we knew each other casually, however, she has a network called the New Age Guild online network. And I saw her, I was out to dinner, and we just, it, the synchronicity of the universe is always so spectacular. We really just bumped into each other. We didn't both know we were gonna be there. She said, oh, by the way, Verona, I'm starting um, sometime next month a new program, a new online radio program. And it is, it has different um, programs, but the one I'm starting is one on prosperity. And I'd like you to be the link pin of this program. She said, right. it's going to be on yeah, thank you. It's going to be on Fridays. And she said, it's from 7 to 10. And I did say to her, Angel, I don't know if I can talk for three hours. I can talk, but I'm not sure if I can talk for three hours. She said, you're not the whole three hours. However, <laughs> you get to decide what you'd like. You could have 30 minutes. You could have an hour. And you get to decide where yours is. You you decide the time because we're gonna make the, we're gonna design the program then around you because we'd like you to come talk about prosperity. She said, and I'd like you to do it. And she said, it's been in my heart for a while. And she said, finally, I decided. Now's the time. You're the one. So I'm so excited that this is gonna happen. Yay! Online radio presence. Thank you, Maria. Online radio presence, and it really is a demonstration of the intention because you guys know I travel the globe and I like to share my gifts and serve spirit all over the world. However, I know because I travel the globe, your physical body can only go so many places at one time. <laughs> really, and, and with the jet lag and things like this. But, and now I'm going to have global giving, global gifting, global serving through online radio presence. So the, uh, I'd like you to mm, take note that these practices, they work. This thing called resetting ourselves back to the original factory settings of our spirituality, it works. That this 
Absolutely, positively. When we have a perspective shift, when we do imaginings, and mostly when we remember, each one of us, who and whose we are. It really, really does work. So today, I want to give you a challenge. The challenge I want to give you today is, whether you stay for the workshop or not, but as you leave here, I want to challenge you to be in a place of perspective shift and imaginings and allow yourself to know the truth of who and what you are. And then from there, allow yourself to be it. Okay, so if the truth of who and what you are, I love Ray's shining face, the truth of who and what he is, he and I share this joy. So if that's what you decide is, is something you reset back to your original factory settings is joy, then be it. Allow yourself to be all those things because only you can bring it the way you bring it. And the world right here and right now absolutely is ready for what you bring, who you are, whose you are, and the love 